right, I think we're all ready. Let's give another big round of applause and a welcome to Chef Nikki Piniawatana. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sunny, for that beautiful introduction. It's why I come, is you, you are amazing. Um, she gets to highlight us, which, you know, a lot of times we're behind the scenes. I'm not so much, but it's just such an honor to be able to represent everyone who works so hard in the kitchen and all the restaurants across Dallas. It's a hard job, but we're so freaking passionate that we will continue to do it no matter what. And whenever we see you all come out here and we get to feed your soul, um, it just makes uh, it all worth it. So thank you. This fried rice is only going to take me like five minutes. So I have to keep talking <laughs> <laughs> before I start cooking. Um, but I think uh, the misconception is, or what I've learned after 20 years, I do a lot of cooking classes at the restaurant and things like that, personal and they're always like, oh my God, Nikki, Thai food is so hard to make. Who, who believes that Thai food is hard to make? A few, yes. Because, you know, there's a lot of ingredients that you might not really know about. Like, what's freaking lemongrass or galangal or ginger? Or how do I use this and how do I use that? Um, so it can be intimidating. And my goal is to deconceptualize that and tell you it is so easy to make uh, the beautiful flavors of Thai cuisine. As long as you have everything ready, we have our mise en place, right? Everything is set and ready to go because once the cooking process starts for any type of stir frying, really no matter what Asian cuisine you're gonna be doing, it takes five to 10 minutes. Um, so you don't have time to run to your refrigerator for you because you forgot to grab the broccoli, for example, and need to wash it and cut it. I mean, that's going to be a while and you don't kind of want to stop that cooking process. Um, so it's extremely important to have all your ingredients all laid out. A lot of times I even put them in order um, so I don't have to think as much. So if I was going to do that, I would start with the oil. I'm going to keep moving the garlic because that's a little chef trick I want to share with you guys. We have eggs, chicken, then garlic then rice, then I'm gonna throw in all the veggies here because I like my veggies still nice and crunchy. Um, and then I'm like ready to roll. And also, I'm gonna grab one of my sauces, stir fry sauce. Um, and that is gonna go right here in this order. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ingredients. Less than 10 ingredients, should take you less than 15 minutes. Um, we did pre-boil the chicken here only for cooking demo process it, uh, procedure, but you don't have to pre-cook your chicken. You can definitely use raw chicken. Um, I have just pure chicken breasts here, thinly sliced, which is also really important when you're cooking in a wok, stir frying, or even if you have a flat pan with the nice uh, sides, that works as well. Um, slicing everything thinner, smaller, makes your cooking process go faster. Right? If you're in a rush, like let's just get this going. I don't want to have to spend 10 minutes trying to cook up my chicken before I get to my rice and all my vegetables. Um, so that's another tip, which brings me to the tomatoes and green onions. So I'm going to cut them two ways. And we use it all. We use all the white parts. There's a lot of flavor in all of this. We do not want to waste what Mother Nature has given us, right? Um, I'm going to cut this. And then this beautiful green, I'm just going to... Just slice it a little bit smaller so that we can use that as garnish at the end. And if you think about it, this part is much more, I call it fragile, delicate. For you to get all the flavors out of that, try not to cook it, but maybe stir them in at the end, use them as toppings, really get that aromatic and that fragrance out of those um, herbs. Um, that's another tip that I love so that um, you really can absorb all the yumminess out of it. So I'm gonna put these green onions in the same area and then tomatoes. So the reason I believe why fried rice or Thai fried rice puts in tomatoes, and we get that at the restaurant all the time, why you put tomatoes in fried rice? It's so weird. I don't like cooked tomatoes. I prefer my tomatoes raw. And there are some people who don't like raw tomatoes and would only eat cooked tomatoes. I think of pizza tomato sauce, right? It's cooked tomatoes and they would never want to eat the raw tomato. It's a whole thing at the restaurant. We go back and forth on this. Um, but what I like to say, like, even though you don't like to eat tomatoes, I would still put them in, like, don't, don't ask them to take them out because it adds flavor to the dish. 
naturally. It adds natural sweetness, a little bit of acidity, balances out with the saltiness of the soy sauce, of the, uh, the, the sauces that you're gonna put in your dish. And automatically you're playing with layers of flavor in the fried rice without even knowing it. So I'm just gonna quarter them. So let's say if you don't like tomatoes, you're not gonna be stuck with a smaller piece of tomato that also gets super smushy when you start stir frying it. So I like them a little bit bigger cubed and quarter. Oh, this is such a pretty tomato. And I don't even de-seed it. I want all that flavor in the fried rice there. It's just gonna all dissipate anyway. Okay, so I have my vegetables ready. Any questions so far? No, we're good? Okay, so I start off with oil. The most common question I get with um, what oil to use. I love to use an odorless, tasteless oil. I don't want it to overpower any of the ingredients that I put in the dish. So think about that with any stir fry. Um, I would use vegetable oil, sunflower oil, avocado oil these days, grapeseed oil. Those are healthier oil options. And um, not olive oil. I wouldn't use, a lot of people like to ask me, can I use sesame oil? Because sesame oil to a lot of people is an Asian oil. They're expensive, and here's the trick. You would want to use sesame oil as a seasoning oil or as a topping oil. So don't use it to start the cook. It can burn up, it can start to smell more rancid. Use it at the end just to add a little flavor and the aromatics, and a little bit goes a long way. So that's the sesame oil tip. I have two eggs here. The portion that I'm making here serves two. So all I'm doing is scrambling the oil. Another thing about me when I cook, I do not like to do dishes. Anybody else love to do dishes and cleans a lot of pots and pans? No, right? I am a one pan, one walk kind of gal. And um, I am not about, hey, let's cook the chicken and then take it out. Let's cook the egg and take it out. Like I've been watching some YouTube videos, you know, and I was like, oh, there's too much. Or somebody will have like three pans going on. We're cooking the chicken, we're cooking the shrimp, and then we're gonna do the, I'm like, look, look, too many, too many. So the order in which I put my protein in is important. So you can see that I put the egg in first, and then I put the chicken, and then I put the garlic. What I've learned, again, from all the cooking classes that I've taught is garlic can burn really fast. And once garlic is burned, you're gonna have to clean that pan and start all over. So once you put the egg in and your protein, it actually helps coat the pan and it prevents the garlic from burning or potentially burning really fast. But you do want that um, garlic to hit the oil. I need a little bit more. <laughs> um, and then just for about 10 seconds or so, you're gonna start to smell the aromatics of the garlic and that's when you know it is ready to move on. Mm, smells good. So I have my rice. It is a day old rice. So if you order takeout from the day before and you have extra rice left over, anybody experience that? I have like two containers of rice <laughs> in my refrigerator because I was enjoying some red curry earlier and then I have all these extra rice, and what do I do? You, thank you, she heard me. She's like, can I have some more oil? <laughs> um, you're the best right hand ever. Uh, okay, so anyway, yes, day-old rice, and if you don't happen to have a day-old rice, and you are going to make rice specifically for fried rice, I would use about half a cup less water, or, or let's say a quarter cup less water, so that your rice has this beautiful separated grains. You don't want your rice to be super soft because it's going through another cooking process. So just use a little bit of less rice, still make sure that your rice is completely cooked through, it just has this little drier texture because then it's gonna be able to absorb all that oil and the sauce and really bloom up and get that second round of cooking. Okay, so you had a question? If you were gonna start the chicken from raw, would you put it in before the egg and do the chicken and then Put yes. the egg in? Either. Either or works. Um, I feel like it's going to take a while to cook that chicken. The and chicken then... before the egg or the egg before the chicken? Which came first, the chicken <laughs> or the egg, Nikki? Um, let me think. Naturally, what I would do, I would probably put the chicken in and then the egg. Okay. But it doesn't hurt to go the other way around, though. It doesn't hurt. 
No. Okay, we'll try. <laughs> I really am taking my time here. But now I'm going to have nice charred uh, eggs and rice. Can you smell it? Nice. Yes. It is the four, five, six rolls now. Yeah, awesome. That's what happens. Okay, our question Ready. is, is that a hex clad plant pan and is it worth the price? I do love it. They don't pay me to say this, but I would love them to. <laughs> um, I do love it. Um, I picked up the hex clad pans during COVID because I was at home cooking a lot, not at the restaurant. And I am all about lighter pans. When I got the set, my mom's like, number one, why did you buy more kitchen equipment? Um, number two, this pan is too heavy. Because we really had a lot of um, Korean pans that are a lot lighter, but also made of um, natural nonstick material. I'm not about all the extra coating that I don't want to be eating. But then she started using it, and then she started calling it her pans. <laughs> I was like, really? Um, so when that happened, I bought myself another set. So that's how much I love them. Um, putting in the onions. And um, the nonstick of this, it's like a whole technology if you guys look it up. It's really fun. Uh, again, scrubbing uh, stick rice to a nonstick pan is not fun either. Okay, ah, this beautiful chart. So in the sauce itself, I have salty and sweetness playing in here. So like a nice savory flavor profile. The sugar that's in the sauce is caramelizing with the soy sauce, creating this beautiful flavor. Another trick here, I don't know if you guys noticed, I have not chopped my rice. I've been really gentle, almost doing this uh, folding action. If any, I have any bakers in, in the crowd, right? We're all about folding so we don't harm or start chopping. I don't like broken rice. Um, so I like my rice still nice and beautiful. My pan is nice and hot. I'm getting the beautiful charred for anything that's coating. If you don't love um, charred rice, you know, like I like the burnt ends of barbecue. I don't know anyone else, right? We, we like that little burn part a little bit. That's what you can create in your uh, fried rice dishes or any stir fry with that. So here I go again, and you can see, oh, can you see that burnt area right there? Oh yeah. Oh, my favorite part. And you can see I'm, I'm knocking the rice off of this because I'm not trying to scrape it and like smashing my rice. I'm like putting a lot of love on my rice here. And you can see the bright colors. Like my fried rice is done, I literally just threw in the tomatoes at the end. They're still nice and whole. They're, they're, um, the color itself is beautiful, and it is done. If you like it more charred, you can just scrape it all around the pan. Really, you know, that's why you want like a high edge. You get more surface area to char all the rice. Um, as you can see, I threw in the tiny green onions at the end, adding more flavor. I've already turned off my fire. So this way, I'm not really cooking anything else. I'm just kind of using that residual heat that was in the dish to bring out the flavor of the extra scallions. You can garnish this with beautiful cilantro. We use a lot of cilantro in our cuisine as well. Um, another thing that I've noticed before I close this up while she sets up um, is we have a lot of similar ingredients in Thai cuisine. Um, and Mexican cuisine. We use a lot of lime juice, cilantro, scallions, tomato, because both of our countries are actually really close to um, the equator. So we have a lot of trop the same tropical um, climate and go a lot, a lot of similar things. So I feel like anyone who lives here in Dallas who loves Tex-Mex and Mexican cuisine like I do, um, would naturally gravitate to Thai cuisine because it's a lot of similar flavor profiles. Yes, absolutely. If you're not eating Thai food, <laughs> you all need to try it. Okay, we need to give one final round of applause and thank you to Chef Nikki Peniawatana for being with us this afternoon. Thank you.